All right, this is the third and final lecture on flow separation and wakes. And what we'd like to do today is just talk a little bit about your assignment, and then I will show you a nice mode of analyzing some of the data that uh, that is of interest in fluid dynamics very broadly and, uh, and can simplify your life a little bit with uh, conducting this assignment. So the first thing to note is that in the assignment, you will be asked to um, rerun this simulation for a large number of different Reynolds numbers ranging from 0.5 up to 200. And so there's a couple of ways you could do that, right? Your Reynolds number is going to consist of the kinematic viscosity of your fluid, um, but also the characteristic length scale of this bluff body, as well as the velocity. And so, you know, you have to figure out a way in which you're going to control the Reynolds number. And obviously the easiest way to do that is going to be doing what we've done within this lecture and um, adjusting the velocity. Um, and what you'll do is you'll describe the regime of the flow. So you have to be able to tell if that flow is transient or not. So do you have a steady flow or do you have a flow that is time varying? Um, do you have an average lift force on the flow? And when we say average lift force, we mean the amplitude of the lift force because the lift force, of course, is going to be symmetrical in time uh, or symmetrical up and down. And so over time, that should average out to zero as you take the limit of that uh, you know, force, uh, integrate over the force in time and divide by the time of the integral, the limit of that as t goes to infinity should be uh, zero. But you wanna know basically square root of that squared limit as you go to infinity. So that's the amplitude. What's the average amplitude of that force vector? And then, um, and then you wanna indicate whether or not there's vortex shedding and you wanna identify the periodicity of the vortex shedding. And so for the periodicity, if we take a look at the gold plot from our last, yeah, sorry. So there I hit right click gold plot show, but I actually want you to double click it and export the results to Excel. One way of looking at the periodicity is to observe, first of all, we can see very clearly we have periodicity here, right? We've got a quasi sine wave type behavior. Um, and so uh, that is in essence, the definition of periodicity. It's something that's happening repeatedly over time with a very, with a regular period. And so uh, you could just count the peaks and say, what time did this start and what time did it go to? And that's one way of determining what the periodicity is. And, and in this lecture, we're gonna look at another way. Um, but before I do that, I'll just mention that the, uh, the next segment of your assignment is going to be to look at uh, vortex shedding frequencies. And again, we were looking at those vortices in the, uh, in the preview of the velocity vector plot where we could see these curved structures advecting downstream. And we wanna look at what happens to them when we change parameters of the simulation while holding Reynolds number constant. So now the uh, if you wanna change uh, an aspect of the flow, like say how fast the air is going, but you want the Reynolds number to be the same, something else will have to change. Like for instance, the size of the obstruction. So that's gonna be the focus of your investigation in the second part of your assignment. But now what I'd like to show you is a way of investigating the data that we have here in order to extract that frequency in a more automatic manner. So what we're gonna do is first we're going to launch MATLAB. And this is optional because like I said, you can count those peaks and you can um, divide by the number of times between a cert um, certain number of periods. And then if you invert it, that is gonna give you the frequency. And we'll do that now as well, but I would like to show you what I think is a more fundamental way of analyzing the data. Uh, so let's make a new script. And the first thing we're gonna do is take this uh, lift force and we wanna just copy down from where we have the physical time and the lift force at the same time. We wanna go there and copy that down. We'll do one column at a time, actually. Okay, what was that? Let's just go copy. 
And then we want to go in MATLAB, click uh, or enter T underscore SW for SOLIDWORKS equals, and then you'll do square bracket, control V, paste it, close the bracket. And then I usually always add a semicolon to suppress output. And if you don't know MATLAB, I mean, you can follow along with what I'm doing here, but again, you don't have to do this analysis. This is just to show you one thing that you can do with this data. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take the lift force data. So we'll call that F, paste it in within the square brackets again, semicolon, enter. And then you can use CLC to clear it. So now if we go plot T underscore SW, comma, F underscore SW. Oh, missed, uh, oh, wait, I just called that F. Actually, let me rename that F. So if you've followed exactly what I did, just go edit. Oops, not edit value. Rename F underscore SW, and you'll see why in a moment. And so when you plot that, uh, this is the data that we have in Excel. What we would like to do is some interpolation because if we plot diff SW, uh, TSW, that's gonna tell us what the spacing is between all of the time outputs that we got. And you can see here that it's not reporting that data at a constant time, which is what we wanted for, which is what we wanted. And so when we, we're going to do something called Fourier analysis, and that's gonna require us to have a um, steady reporting axis for X. So in the script, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna start off by saying how many data points I want, and I'm gonna choose a power of two, uh, which is convenient for Fourier transforms. So let's do 256. And then um, uh, I would like to make a new time axis. So actually let's plot that time axis again. So I'm gonna go from point one, once we're in the steady regime here, to point two. So let's say T equals lin space, which is gonna make a linear space set of data, a vector of data from point one to point two with N points. And I'll just show you how that looks. If I go lin space zero to one with five, it will give me a vector that has five points equally spaced from zero to one. Okay, uh, what we'd like to do next is create a delta time uh, value, which is gonna be useful later when we compute our frequency axis. And so for delta time, uh, you can set that to mean diff of the T vector. And so if we plot that T vector, if we plot diff of the T vector the way we did with diff of T SOLIDWORKS, it's gonna be a line. It's gonna, all of the differences are gonna be the same. So you could pick any one of them. You could set this to be, you know, dt equals t2 minus t1 if you wanted, but we're just, it, it can sometimes be convenient to set the time step this way. And so that's what we're gonna do in this case, just so you've seen it. And now our new force vector is going to be interpolated at those times. So set f to be interp one. And then if you open the bracket, it'll give you a tooltip your X vector, your values, and then the X vectors where you'd like to interpolate. That's what this function wants. And so our X is gonna be time from uh, SOLIDWORKS. Our Y values are gonna be the forces output by SOLIDWORKS. And the new X values is gonna be that new time vector. And so now if I run that, it's gonna ask me to save. I'm gonna to save to the desktop. Well, actually, I'll save it to that module just to keep it. Um, so let's go. What do I want here? SJG. And I'll call this Fourier analysis. Oh, it doesn't like the space. Change folder. Okay. So now I've run that. If we, you can see in the workspace, we have variables T and F. If I now plot, T and F, 
you can see that it's this, uh, we, we've restricted ourselves to 1.1 seconds to 0.2 seconds, and the data points are gonna be evenly distributed. You can't see it the way I did it, but if I add a marker, so I've added this dash dot, that's gonna give me a line with small dots. Uh, oh, whoops. That's not what I wanted. Okay, if you were to look at these very closely, you would find that they are now evenly spaced, whereas the previous uh, values were not evenly spaced. Okay, so now we're gonna do our Fourier analysis. So um, uh, start off by taking, giving yourself a new variable, which is going to be the uh, absolute value. Well, let's call it, let's call it abs ff is going to be the absolute value of the fast Fourier transform of F. And so what the Fourier transform is, is it's like a Fourier series. So you'll have, you, you might've done the Fourier transform. I'm not hundred percent sure if you'll have encountered that yet, but you've definitely, I hope done a Fourier series, which is where you take sines and cosines of different frequencies, and then you add them up with increasing frequencies and you can represent any periodic function with an infinite series of sines and cosines. So you take some portion of the one wavelength, some portion of another periodic uh, uh, wavelength. And when you add them up and you add up all of those components, you can get an arbitrary shape out of it that's repeating. What a Fourier transform is, is it's similar to that, except instead of having these discrete wavelengths and a sum to infinity, we have an integral and a sum to infinity, and it's like we're adding up over continuously increasing uh, frequencies of those sine functions. And it's not sine and cosine, it's it's just a, uh, uh, and it, okay, well, so I'm not gonna give you a detailed overview of what Fourier analysis is, um, but that I think is enough to gesture towards it. It's, a, it's like a continuous version of the Fourier series in some sense, um, but it's gonna let us, analyze what the frequency content of that signal is. So, okay, we've taken abs FFT. Uh, what I'd like to do now is calculate the frequency uh, axis that goes along with this uh, Fourier transform. And so to calculate the frequency axis, so F is gonna be frequency in Hertz, we want to uh, have a vector that goes from zero to N minus one. And I'll just show you again what that, colon operator does. If I go one to five in MATLAB, it gives me a vector from one to five. If I were to go one to n minus one, or zero to n minus one, let's say, because that's what we're actually doing up there, it's gonna give me a vector that goes from zero to 255, okay? And so then you wanna multiply this by one, oh, or actually let's just divide this by, uh, now we're gonna scale it, by uh, dt times n. And that's how you get the frequency axis for a fast Fourier transform. And what we'll do now is we'll set up some plots. So let's go uh, plot results. That's a comma with a percentage sign. So you do comments in, uh, sorry, comments, not comma. That's how you do comments in MATLAB. So comment plot results. Now you wanna go figure, uh, and again, semicolons are gonna suppress output in MATLAB. The figure won't have out output, but it's just a force of habit for me. I, I suppress output all the time. And we'll make two subplots. The first subplot, so go subplot one comma two comma one. First one is how many rows of subplots you want. Second argument is how many columns of subplots. The third column is which subplot are we looking at right now? And so then we will go plot T and F as before, and we want to uh, give this a title, which we will say call time domain. And then we want to add something called X label, which is just gonna be the label of the X axis. And in this case, it's time in seconds. You can see I'm using ticks to indicate strings here. Y label, uh, we have force underscore lift, in Newtons. And now we want another plot. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it to save myself a couple seconds here. So now change that one to two, and that indicates that we're in the second subplot. And the title should be frequency domain. 
the X label should be lowercase f in Hertz. And the Y label, we can put abs, FFT, FL, and the units remain in Newtons. And the thing I forgot to change there, which is important, is you want to plot F versus, what did we call this up here? Abs FF. So abs of the Fourier transform of F. But we also want to indicate which values we plot. If you just plot F and abs FF, you're going to get a two-sided Fourier transform. So let's go open brackets, and then we can select the indices that we want to plot. And we'll go from one, because unlike other programming languages, MATLAB begins indexing at one. It's not every, sure there are other languages that do that, but MATLAB is somewhat unique in that regard. So you want to go one, two, N over two, minus one. And that should be a capital N. And you want to apply that to both of these, to F and abs FF. And now if you run that, here, we have a very nice plot which shows us the uh, first the force acting on that cylinder. And so you can see that force changing in time. And on the right hand side, we have a frequency plot from the Fourier transform, which tells us which frequencies are needed to compose that signal. And in this case, um, all of that frequency is around 179. And so what we're gonna do now is two things. First, I will show you how to extract that frequency. So let's now go report results, make a new little section for ourselves here. And we want to grab the max, the index of the maximum value. So if you give yourself square brackets and go tilde i equals max abs ff, that will return the first value here. This I'm putting a dummy variable in which says we don't want anything. The second one is gonna be an index. And so this will be the index at which this value is maximum. And now F underscore shed is going to be equal to the frequency at I. And we can um, go beyond that. We can print it out nicely. So let's go CLC, which will clear the command window and then type in f print f, and let's give ourselves a string. And for our string, I will go um, shedding frequency, and then go percentage 0.2f, so percentile 0.2f, that's gonna indicate that we wanna input a number. Space, hertz, in square brackets or whatever you use to indicate units, and then backslash n. Okay, if we run this now, uh, so we've created our chart again, and oh, we did not specify a number. That's my bad. So what you should have done after the string, or what I should have done, is comma and then put f shed in. So now it's going to print out that variable. So okay, now we've done that again, and it uh, it tells us that we have a shedding frequency of one hundred and seventy nine point thirty hertz. So that's the frequency at which that uh, oscillation is occurring. Uh, what and the other way and the more uh, sort of like old school way of doing this is to get it by hand. So let's do this um, by grabbing the X value at one of these points. So this is 0 0.103137. So 0 0.103137. And then let's count. So we have one period. And the more periods you do, the better. So one, two, actually you want to stop doing these. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay. For 10, we're at about 0 0.158431. 0 0.158431. And now you want to take the difference in those times. And so the the time difference divided by the number of, um, of periods is going to be the periodicity uh, or the period. But we would like the inverse of that, which is the frequency. So then let's go 10 divided by that time difference. And we have 180.851. So it's essentially the same as the, like to, you know, within 1% of the value that we got from the Fourier analysis. 
But here it's kind of sensitive to where exactly that top value is on the on the uh, peak. And we're kind of taking these two points. So we're, we're getting an, an, a, a more accurate value because we're including several points. But the Fourier transform is really considering all of the data in this whole plot at once. And so that should really be a more accurate value of the shedding frequency. But so that is an example of a workflow you can create for yourself. Now we have this whole um, script set up. I could just run this and get the shedding frequency automatically. And you can copy your data in the way I just did. And, uh, and so this is a nice tool for you to be able to use to analyze the uh, output of your transient simulation. Um, and that's all for the second lecture or the analysis lecture on flow separation and wakes.